get codes everybody because they will be playing a game called Danganronpa Alter Nexus. Let's uh, go. Danganronpa Alter Nexus. Cool. There's dub. Awesome. Huh. What's going on? Can I use the enter button? Whoa! I sat straight up in a panic. I was sitting on a bed in a room I'd never seen before. The surroundings were in an ominous bright purple, like something you'd see in a video game. Where the hell am I? By the way, there's no option to fucking mix the volume. Another dang around the fan game that removes the volume options. Fuck this game! Why do devs do this? Anyway, where the hell am I? Had someone abducted me and taken me here? If so, for what purpose and why me? I need to find a way to get out of here and fast. No, wait, I should calm down. Deep breathe in, deep breathe out. I have to stop panicking. Who knows, maybe I've just fallen for an elaborate prank from a friend. <laughs> okay, I need to clear my mind and reorganize everything. Cool. You do that. That's right, huh? I'm Ryuji Uchida. 17 years old. A high schooler turning 18 this October. I'm 170 centimeters. 62 kilograms. Okay. I haven't lost my memory. Now, the next question is... Where is this place? And what am I doing here? Cool. Dub. Nice. Okay. What was the last thing I remember? I was... Well, I was... No, no, no more. <laughs> An introduction to Overspeak Academy again? Ugh. Nothing's coming to me. I suppose there's no use sitting here sulking. Maybe if I start searching this room, everything will come back. Clicking on errors, you want to investigate will make Ryuji react. Gathering information will be essential to fully understand the story. Yeah. If you are ever unsure about what to interact with, click on the eye on top of the screen. And voila, your detective's instinct will kick in and bring forward the errors that seem suspicious. After you're satisfied with the investigation and want to advance the story, click the arrows in the top right. Alright, I should start looking. Cool, but before that, uh... What, no option to fucking change the message options too? Why do people do this? Why? I wanna know why. <laughs> the message is too slow. Why do people do this? The bed I woke up on. Research and Orthodox design is incredibly comfortable with a soft pillow and thick blanket. Just five more minutes in the soft world of dreams. Now's not time. A weird door? And some buttons on either side? Nope, just a wall decal. Gotta love to meet the guy that designed this place. A mirror? No wait, there's a static on here. It's a screen. A screen mounted onto a wall. Who would have guessed? I'm starting to think I've been kidnapped by aliens. No, this isn't some cheap B-grade action movie. A desk chair. Nothing out of the ordinary swivels side to side. I broke one of these by spitting on it too much in grade school. Now's not the time for dumb school memories. Oh, it's a sheet of paper. To Mr. Ryuji Uchida. Welcome to Utopic Chris Academy. Please enjoy your stay. Huh? What? Uch is that pronounced Utopic? Because you know Utopia. And yeah. Crest? That's right. I felt completely worthless that morning when I didn't get accepted into the college I applied for. Right when I was about to just lose all hope in life, I heard the doorbell ring. Initially, I was going to get it, but they started begging the door. And the next thing I know... There were three men in black suits that appeared before me. And they told me that I had been accepted in Utopic Press Academy. The greatest school in the entire country. Wait, what is he anyway? Is he, 
Asian? Like, which which country? What entire country are we talking about first? In which country are we in? <laughs> At least give me something as basic as that. I'm assuming it's, uh, I don't know, Japan? But I can speak English though, so... <laughs> Obviously, I didn't believe them because why would they want a nobody like me to attend an academy of the greats? Someone needs to fill the seats. <laughs> Besides, I didn't even send in an application. That's right, I remember now. They told me that all the students are chosen based on their individual talents. And then, um... And then what? I don't remember anymore. Did one of those guys knock me out and take me here? Damn it, I'm the unluckiest guy alive. First, I don't get accepted for college. And next thing I know, I've been abducted. Wait, so we're not high school? Nice. Let's see, is this a pen? Nothing more. Oh, a wall? The walls are made as a smooth, shiny metal. It feels cold placing my palm on there. No windows, huh? Some architecture. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's enough. I suppose that's all I could search for in here. Should I try and leave the room? I suppose. Alright, I'll see what's outside this door. I sure hope it's unlocked. Click. Phew, seems like it opened. Okay, deep breathing. This is all going to be alright. With my mind made up, I took one bold step outside of the room. Cool. Pog, the promised utopia. I stepped out of the room and was greeted with a dark hallway. Hi, dark hallway. It's dark. It looks similar to something you'd see in a hospital. Purple again, huh? Just as I was coming to terms with the environment that I was in, I heard a voice from behind me. Hey! I turned around toward the location of the voice. Duh! Were you the one that locked me in here, you creep? It was a girl with bright colored hair and tan skin. What? Well, was it? Huh? No, of course not. I woke up in this room right here not too long ago. Huh? Oh, you too, huh? Ah, uh, what is this? Some kind of mass kidnapping? I've had stalkers in the past, but this is a whole new level of gross. The girl started walking down the hallway to the other end. Hey, where are you going? What? Huh? Where do you think? Out of this gross place, duh. She paced down toward the door at the other end of the hallway. As I watched her step forward frustrated, a door opened from the right. Hmm. Weird. Whoa! This time it was a tall guy. He was nearly the same height as the door frame. <sighs> so there are other people here too then, huh? Yeah, the city sure is a freaky place. Hey! You must be the one that I... <sighs> no, you're just another character like that dork in red, aren't you? Dork in red? Whatever. The girl continued to walk toward the end of the hallway. Huh? Do you know what's going on? Sorry, no clue. <laughs> well, I'm sure it'll all work out in the end. As he said that, with an optimistic smile, the giant followed the girl. Hey, wait up! I quickly followed the two down the dark hallway. I didn't want to be the only one left behind after all. Where are we going? We walked through the corridor at the end of the hallway and arrived in a new room. New room? Ah, uh, purple again, huh? Without hesitation, the girl stepped forward toward the blue exit sign. The giant soon followed. Hey, hold on a second. Fine. What now? Don't you think it's almost too easy to just head to the exit and leave? I mean, we've been abducted after all. What kind of culprit will leave us with a straightforward escape route? Huh? Well, I guess so. So? What do you have in mind then? Well, it's probably best to investigate a little, right? I mean, what if we just waltz past the true exit just by accident because we ended up following our instincts? There's an exit right there, though. Guess you have a point. Let's make it quick, then. Alright, let's take a look at what's in this room. Large windows surround this end of the room. Outside is nothing but darkness, tinted in a color of violet. Hey! Big guy, you're up. Huh? Me? What? Duh, who else? The only other guy here is the scrawny wimp. God, how many insults am I gonna take today? 
Not sure why I'm being targeted, but okay. Listen. Alright, try opening that window. <sighs> okay then. John tried flicking the lock, but it seemed to be bolted shut. He then gave up and started yanking the windows with all of his strength. Rattle, rattle. Sorry about that. You. Sorry, that ain't moving. <sighs> well, I guess it was worth a try. Time to go to the bathroom. A door with a giant M painted in blue on it. It must be something. I don't. I know it is the master bedroom. Must be the male bathroom. Oh fuck me. <laughs> Listen. Well, are you just going to stand there? Huh? Well, I suppose we could take a look inside. He opened the door. The giant soon followed. Are you not going with us? Duh. You really think I'm going to go into the men's bathroom? I'll take that as a no. I mean, we're in a strange place. It's not weird to enter the bathroom to check for clues. That's the only thing we're doing, right? It's not like I'm going to piss on someone. Just make it quick. All right, I'll shout if I find anything. <sighs> Whatever. Ain't you going to introduce your name first? Whatever happened to the name? Purple again. I don't know, man. This looks blue to me. Am I colorblind? Why am I even surprised at this point? Am I am I discovering just now that I'm fucking colorblind? That it that it seems to look like a standard school shower room. Let's take a look then, shall we? Standard mirror attached to the wall. <laughs> God, I'm handsome. Didn't ask. Wow, this guy's humble. A sink. It's all polished and it reflects the light beaming into the room. It has a bottle of soap attached. I've only ever seen these things empty. Hey. Do you think the water will turn on? I mean, if you flirt it, I guess. You touch it on its good side, probably. <laughs> oh yeah, good point. I gently push the tap handle backward to check the water. Water gushed out in response. <laughs> well, I suppose we won't get thirsty in here. This guy's smarter than he looks. Did you check the tap to see if We'd have a chance to survive if we couldn't escape tonight. Now I think it was more like animal instinct. Is he an edible? A row of showers. There are curtains attached to each cubicle. <sighs> These showers seem like they won't reach very high. Sucks to be tall like you, I guess. Wait, is he seriously thinking about what living here would be like? Let's see. A bench made of metal. God, this would suck to sit on while waiting for the showers. Up we go. Time to sit down after all that walking. What are you, an old man? Possibly. A row of lockers. Seems like it uses a key system through inserting a plastic plane. Look at all these safes. Just imagine how much money would be in here. Even I couldn't stoop to such a lame joke. I don't get it. A window, holy fucking shit, what a discovery. <laughs> it's a design that slides open. It doesn't seem like I could reach it from the floor. Hey, you think you could reach that window up there? <laughs> We'd be able to if you got on my shoulders. Wait, that's not what I... The giant lifted me up onto his back. I instantly regretted asking. But I suppose since I'm up here, I might as well check. I grabbed the window's lock and pulled. No luck, the lock won't even budge. Maybe we can pull the whole lock off with enough force. Who does he think I am? His eyes seem super genuine. Fine. I yanked the window as hard as I could. Rattle, rattle. What did he expect? I'm definitely no Superman. Alright, I give up. Can you let me down? Got it. Right. The giant tossed me down onto the bench. I felt a harsh pain run up my spine. Ow, treat me with respect for God's sake. Let me guess, you don't have a girlfriend, do you? Huh? <laughs> hey. You know. Yep. This is my first time in the shower room like this. Come again? In high school, I went to a few years back, you didn't have a change room or anything. <laughs> then again, we didn't have sports clubs. High school without sports clubs? He has to be joking. So it's super awesome getting to see something like this for the first time. So uh, why didn't your school have any sporting clubs? <laughs> oh simple, there were only about 30 people enrolled. 
I don't even know how to react to that. So I feel sorry for the guy for once. Anything else? Done here, done that, done that, done that, done that. So yeah, I guess we're done with this room. Should we head back to the hallway? Alright. Fine. Uh, took you long enough. My apologies, your highness. So? How was it? No luck. <sighs> Why did I expect anything from you, lot? Oh, shit. Someone woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. What's <laughs> <laughs> up, little buddy? <sighs> Got any ideas where we could be? I could tell he's treating me like a kid. I'm not little, this guy's just far too big. I guess we could be somewhere in Tokyo. Oh. At a bed facility, maybe? Something like a hospital? Oh. A hospital, huh? I suppose that would be the best place to be if anything goes wrong. If anything goes wrong, he says. Funny, it seems to be that everything has gone wrong. Besides, I only said we could be in a hospital, but it seems like he's dead convinced. Great. What? Sorry. I just feel like I've seen you somewhere before. Whatever. It's my first time seeing you. Then again, you're pretty forgettable, so maybe we have met before. Don't know, don't care. God, I regret even bringing that up. Nothing on the roof. A door with an F painted in pink. The color is ominously blood-like. Oh. This must be the women's bathroom. The girl stood in front of the door. Uh... <gasps> Don't tell me you can't read. Duh. This is the women's bathroom, Buster. Well, yeah, I get that, but... Aren't we going to investigate here? What? Yeah, I'll do the investigating. Duh. Okay, I'll just be waiting here then, I suppose. The girl went into the bathroom and slammed the door shut. No need to leave me alone, though. Got it. So I guess it's just you and me for a while, huh, buddy? Alright, he was here too, wasn't he? <laughs> Man, the city sure is interesting. But for me to have just moved to Tokyo and be put into such a crazy situation. You're from the countryside? <laughs> oh yeah, super far from Tokyo. There were fields surrounding me where I lived. And yet you ended up into this mess. My condolences. Let's see, the door to the bathroom opened. Fine. Enough to chat. Back to searching you two. What was in the bathroom? What? Nothing you need to know about. I see. She didn't find anything at all and doesn't want to admit it. Cool. The exit sign. It shines an ominous blue. Why is this place color coded to be all purpley color anyways? Must have been the architect's favorite color. What a weird architect. Anything else? Seems to be an unused electricity socket. I don't have anything to charge. Whatever. If only they didn't take away my phone. This totally sucks. She seems more annoyed about her phone being stolen than her life being on the line. Though I suppose she brings up a good point. I didn't even realize my phone had been taken from me because of how panic I was. No way to call for help for outside either, huh? Hmm. Is not having a phone really that much of a problem in life? Never knew City Folk depended on electronics this much. What? Oh, can it, Country Bumpkin. You wouldn't understand. Let's see. Now with that, now with that. Should we stop investigating and continue going forward? I suppose. Okay, do you two want to head through this door here? <sighs> Guess so. We spent all the time looking around for nothing. At least now we're 100% sure that we didn't overlook anything, right? Totally. I suppose you have a point. Alright, let's keep going. There's no use waiting around here doing nothing. <laughs> I wonder what we'll see next. Why the hell is he so excited about all of this? God, I really have been put in here with a bunch of weirdos. Put in here? Wait. We need to go back. What? What the hell are you on about? We need to go back to the rooms you came from. Duh. Are you out of your mind? There were six, no, eight rooms in that corridor. Why didn't I realize sooner? We all woke up in three of those rooms. Wouldn't that mean that there's five others here with us? I guess you could be right, but... What? No, you're crazy if you think you'd go back just to see some of the people that we don't even know were captured or still there or not. Alright, I'll go back and check myself then. 
I'm with the kid on this one. If it means we can find more people, then we might be able to understand what this is all about. Yep. Besides, helping those in need was my grandma's motto in life. Fine. Listen. But make it quick, we don't have all day. They complied much easier than I thought. Maybe I judged them too harshly based on first impressions alone. Well, I suppose we should head back without wasting any more time. Cool. With our minds made up, we rushed back toward the rooms that we had originally woken up in. It didn't take long to come back to the corridor that we were all so familiar with. <sighs> Is that thunder outside? Can you not do this today, please? I just got back from a sickness. The headache almost killed me, and I'm like, come on, dude. Okay. The bright-haired girl stepped toward the closet door on her left and placed her hand on the door handle. Without hesitation, she turned it. Click. The door opened. We all took a look inside. But no one was to be seen. Hey! Hold on, look at the bed. The giant pointed to the bed in the open room. The blanket was tossed over to the side as if someone had gotten out of it previously. You were right, someone was definitely here before. Okay, we have four more rooms to check. Listen. Alright, you in the red, can you check the two rooms on the other end of the hallway? Not those at the edge of the wall though. Those were the two that we both came out of. You're probably faster than the big guy here and these boots I'm wearing aren't the greatest to run in. We'll check these two in front. Wow, I'm impressed. She called me came up with the quickest solution in just a few seconds. Okay, I'll get to it. I'll shout out if I find anyone. You two do the same, alright? The other two nodded. I ran toward the other end of the hallway. Placed my hand on the doorknob of the door directly next to the room I was asleep in. Click. The door opened. What lay in front of me was a scene all too familiar. An empty room with a messy bed. Damn it. No luck over here. Hey! Nothing in this room either. Hey! No luck for me too. I turned toward the final door that had been open. It was the room directly next to the room the girl woke up in. I placed my hand on the doorknob in anticipation. Come on! Who that? Door opened as expected. What I wasn't prepared for was what happened next. Please, God, save me. Please don't kill me. I was taken back by what was in front of my eyes. A blue-haired boy was cowering before me. He was afraid of what I do because I am a god to him. <laughs> he dived into his bed and hid under his blanket. Hi? I'm begging you! I'm too young to die. I swear I'll do anything, just please don't kill me. Here, I'll even open up my asshole for you. <laughs> the two that were at the other end of the hall had noticed and came toward the entrance of the room. <laughs> oh, there really was someone here. Great, a spineless dork. Look, I swear my loyalty to you. Just please don't execute me. Hey! We're here to save you. Duh. Don't drag me into this. I never said I'd save anyone. Huh? Thank you! I woke up here and I was so scared. The boy jumped out of his bed, ran up and started to hug me full force. Hey, get off of me. Why me? For a split second, I regret the decision I had made to look for the other captives. I'm sorry I thought I was alone in here and was never going to see anyone else. Have you tried going outside? <laughs> Whatever. He's all yours, Buster. Yup. Well, at least he found someone. These two are leaving this all to me, aren't they? Just great. The boy stopped clinging to me. But the damage had already been done. His content stream was tears and damp in my jacket. I sure hope there was a washing machine here. We headed out of the room and stood at the corridor. What? So, where are we off to? Jesus, calm down quick. To think this was the same guy screaming his lungs out a second ago. What? Trying to find our way out of here, duh. Yeah, dude! Alright. Oh yeah, I'm Ichiro Samajima, by the way. What about you guys? Alright. I didn't get the names of the other two I'd been with, did I? Yup. I'm Shinosuke Kurumada. Pleasure to meet you. Ichiro Shinosuke, huh? Right, I'm Ryuji Uchida. Gorgeous girls! And what's your name, gorgeous? Ichiro looked toward the girl. <sighs> Gross. She hesitated but then let out a sigh. Anzukagami. Oh yeah! 
Anzu, that's a pretty name. How awesome is this? A pretty name for such a pretty girl. Listen. Look, let's hurry up and find an exit. Yeah, we can always talk while on the move. I felt a sense of relief learning that I was the only one in this situation. Sure, they might be a little bit odd in their own ways, but one thing was certain. We all wanted to get back to our normal lives. The four of us ran through the corridors back into the room with the exit. This time, we kept going and went through the door with the blue sign. We then came to a halt. Hey, hey, hey! Whoa! Huh? Where are we? Hey! Whoa, this is some pretty impressive architecture. Purple, yep. We all stopped for a second, processing just exactly what kind of building we could have been standing in. Do you understand? We're in Utopic Res Academy. We heard a voice call out to us from the other end of the hallway. A lady in a Chinese style dress walked toward us. Her expression was stern. How awesome is this? Another gorgeous lady. I must be in heaven. <sighs> just stay quiet, Aqua Boy. Oh, hey, all four of us just woke up in those rooms back there not too long ago. Just as suspected. I suspected as much. But what did you mean we're in Utopic? Exactly. Well, we've most likely been recruited to join Utopic Crest Academy. I'm sure you already knew that from the letters you found in your room. Does she mean the invitation that was on the table? Huh? Recruited without our consent? I assume so. Most likely so. I'm sure we've all heard of the rumors surrounding that name. Anyone who goes there has a life of success after graduation. What a load of bullshit, there's no promised utopia anywhere in the world. Just who are you anyways? Mei Feng. Cool. Huh? Do you understand? It's Chinese. Oh, you're an exchange student? Exactly. Something like that. Look, we should get going. I've scouted this entire floor, but the only thing I could find that could be an exit was a large door in the main hallway. Something that looks like it'd be for a gymnasium. I suppose we're in a school after all. Huh? You didn't check what was inside? That's an order. Not yet. I wanted to be absolutely sure that there would be no one else left behind before moving forward. Um... No one else? Do you understand? I saw a group of three earlier heading into the large door I mentioned. And if I were to add the four of you here along with myself, that's eight. The same amount of people as the doors in that hallway. Look, I didn't know for sure if I could go back here after entering that door. Exactly. Now do you understand why I didn't rush toward any potential exit? She's so sharp. Ever since the moment we met up with her, she's been calm and assessed every possible outcome. Maybe with her by our side, we can finally figure out what's going on here. Alright. But now that we're all here, why don't we stop talking and get going? You're right, there isn't much use staying here much longer. Cool. The four of us followed Mei Feng down the hallway toward the door she mentioned she earlier. Not surprisingly, every window we came across was tinted so that we couldn't see what was outside. We arrived in front of a large set of sliding doors. They were gymnasium style, just as Mei Feng mentioned earlier. Each of us was the first to break the silence. Um... So are we going to open these doors now? Without answering, Mei Feng walked toward the door and started to knock. Hey, hey, hey! What are you doing? Hey! We're characters like you, we're opening the door now. She said firmly directing her voice toward the other side of the doors. <laughs> we don't want them dying of a heart attack by suddenly opening the door, right? I suppose she has a point. Or was she trying to lighten the mood with a bizarre joke? I'm back. Don't forget to stretch and hydrate yourselves, fellas. May Feng slid the doors open and we soon followed. Ooh, that felt good. We walked into the room. It was a small area with an elevator and another set of sliding doors like the ones we just opened. As May Feng had mentioned, three people were in the room. Just as I thought. There really were more people joining us here. I mean, I appreciate it, but I'm sure I wouldn't have freaked. Though, I can't speak for the other two. I thank you. I for and I'm very glad you went out of the way to do that. I thank you with all my heart. Yay! Seems like there are more people here after all. The one with the white hair was lying down on the row of seats. The taller girl with brown hair stood timidly in the room while the younger one with the twin tails was sitting on the floor. Hey! What's with those numbers above the door? 
Shinosuke pointed to the giant digital clock on the door frame. The numbers counted down one second at a time. Just as suspected. I see, a timer. Hey, hey, hey! Hold on, don't tell me this is a bomb. Wh why is this happening? You have to be kidding me. Please, God, save me! I don't want to die. <laughs> I suppose one would react that way. But let's think about this logically. Do you think the people that organized our kidnapping would just blow us all up right away? That wouldn't make a lot of sense, would it? Then why didn't they just kill us to begin with instead of bringing us here? Whoever organized our kidnapping. Would this be right? At least in my eyes, it seems like the eight of us are in Topic Crest Academy. We've been taken in by someone, or most likely a group of people. And it seems as though they've assigned us all with a specific talent that makes us distinct. Here. Remember the invitation in our rooms? Hold on, I remember an invitation, but what do you mean by talent? Hmm. Oh, you know, right at the bottom of the paper. Ultimate something, I'm sure I was the only one who saw that. Huh. I tried thinking back to when I observed the sheet of paper in my room. I don't think there was anything written about a talent, but... I can 100% say there wasn't anything written either. Would this be right? Maybe you were just panic at the time and breezed past it. Though I don't think it's really the most important thing right now. How's this? I have a bit of a theory, would all care to listen? My guess is that Utopic Crest was nothing more than a front for some kind of social experiment. <laughs> I mean, I've never heard of a school that kidnapped students for the new semester. And what do you mean? A social experiment? What kind of proof do you even have to back up a claim like that? That's impossible. Well, for one, that up there is definitely not a bomb. Hey, hey, hey! How can you be so sure? Listen. The door's locked. Go on, give it a pull if you're so unsure. Each of ran toward the door and yanked the handle. The door didn't budge. Um... You're right. Here. And what do you notice? No lock anywhere, correct? How interesting. So that time there's an automatic lock that will open the door after it turns to zero. Correct. Yep. You seem to be pretty sharp. I think I like you already. So what now? Are we just going to wait here until the door opens? Listen. By the way, exchange information. It sure seems like we've all been taken to Utopic Crest Academy for some reason, but there's one thing that I still don't understand. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What type of school is Utopic Crest known as? Hmm. What type of learner that anyone that graduates can get into the most highest paying jobs in the country? Do you mean? I think it's located somewhere in Tokyo. Well, it's a high school, right? Even though, what? I'm college, right? Correct. Bingo. Yay! I was right. How's this? Now, let me ask you this. How old are we all? Everyone's sitting in a room with a confused look. Uh, sorry. My apologies. I guess I should explain. Listen. A standard high school in this country consists of students aged anywhere from 16 to 18, correct? But what about everyone here? Here. Why don't we start with you and the brown hair and work our way around? Oh, of course. Oh, um, I'm 18. Yay! I'm 15. Yup. It's ready for me. <laughs> yeah, dude! Sweet 17. <sighs> 19. I was standing next to Adzo, meaning I was next. I'm turning 18 this year. Perhaps it was pride, but for some reason, I didn't want to admit I was the same age as Ichiro. Do you understand? 23. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised from her calm demeanor, but I guess she really is the oldest out of all of us. Hmm. 15 to 23, huh? What kind of a high school would accept an age range as big as that? What? Hey, hold on. You didn't tell us your age. Uh, sorry. Oh, I guess you're right. You tell me. Well, I'll leave that up to your imagination. They say a person tends to become more interesting if they have a mysterious side, after all. More importantly... Besides, it doesn't really matter anymore when they figure out our overall age range, does it? I see. You're saying our age range is too large for our normal high schools, correct? So the stories about you topic Chris being an elite school were nothing more than urban myths. I'm not surprised in the slightest. Listen. See what I said? Something's definitely off here. Anyway, it seems like we've got a little more than 15 minutes left in here. I don't know why, but I feel as though the mastermind behind this wants us to cooperate and work together. <laughs> well, maybe this is me being hopeful. <laughs> See? 
But what else can we do but kill time in this situation? So how about it? Why don't we all get to know each other? They do say the best friendships happen in the most unexpected situations, right? I suppose there isn't much else we can do right now. Besides, what's the use of getting all riled up and worried about the what-ifs at the end of the day? Alright, I should get to know everyone here. Left to right. Yo, I'm Ichiro Samajima. Let's just take it easy, yeah? Mind talent, you ask? Mine is Ultimate Fisherman. Cool. Well, I doubt there'd be a place for freaking fishing here, though. I guess the next best thing to do is to fish the hearts of all the hot babes in here. <laughs> cool. One word to describe this guy. Obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, dude. Feel free to call me Ichan if you want. Absolutely not. <laughs> Funny story. I nearly drowned the other day. Come again? <laughs> yeah, I was just doing my own thing at the lake trying to fish when one of those buggers pulled me in. Then again, I don't know how much of that is true. I was asleep after all. Did he make up a random story as an icebreaker or is he really that stupid? Um... Right, other hobbies you ask. I never ask. How cool am I? There's not much else to me other than fishing and picking up chicks. <laughs> What kind of parody makes a kid turn out like this? Gorgeous girls! Which, speaking of, did you see the girls here, man? Miss Anzu, Miss Mayfang, not to mention the brown haired girl in the apron. I'm starting to think I'm in heaven, not hell. I think you should go to hell. <laughs> My name is Shinosuke Kurumada. I'm sure we're getting along just fine. My talent is Ultimate Car Maniac, apparently, but. It's something special, really. I'm just obsessed with cars. That's all. <laughs> the ultimate car maniac, huh? Not sure what I expected from this guy. Though I suppose a big guy like him would be good at working in a shed all day. You said you moved out of the city, but wouldn't there be more space to drive around in the countryside? Hmm. Well, you see. My pop sent me out here to uh, study. I suppose we have more schools out here in the city, so I guess that makes sense. <sighs> nah, no, it's not that. My pop is the founder of Kuramada Auto. Kuramada Auto? That's one of the largest car dealerships in Japan as of late. We've branched out across the world, isn't it? That's really impressive. Wouldn't you be able to get you a job at one of the branches really easily then? Yup. Well, yeah, but... <sighs> I enjoyed being back home. All the space in the world to try out new vehicles I've been working on, and a real sense of community with everyone in my town. It didn't seem to me like he'd be the type to get homesick, or it might just be that he doesn't want to live life the way someone else told him to. I'm sure he'll be able to find a group of friends here in the big city too. We're not heartless after all, haha. <laughs> you know, you're right, little guy. You gotta man up and not get all depressed over the little things. Got it. I have decided. I'll take you around for a drive one day back home. I know all the great spots. One time I was whizzing through the fields enjoying myself. Actually, maybe we shouldn't talk about that story. But I'm sure we'll have a great time. I should be worried, shouldn't I? Maybe knowledgeable in cars, but he never mentioned if I was good at driving, did he? Yeah, I knew it because of the net. So you catch all them bugs? Like all the bugs in the world? In this one specific country? <laughs> this girl sure seems to be a ball of energy though. Wait, hey. How can you be so sure it's morning? I mean, we can barely tell how bright it is with all these tinted windows. <sighs> well, I mean, I can just tell from the air. Excuse me? I can't tell if she's serious or not. Though she sure seems to be an oddball. Sorry, I didn't quite get that. What did you say? <laughs> right, I forgot. Grandpa did say most humans aren't as smart as us. Silly me. Us. What is she? Some extraterrestrial that came down to Earth? Either way, that sure did feel condescending. Hmm. Well, you see, I've lived my whole life in the forest with my grandpa. That's why I can sense things differently to most other people. Yep, yep. 
Then again, this is the first time meeting anyone other than my grandpa, so... Maybe everyone else has some secret superpower unique to them, too. I can speak on behalf of humanity and say, we absolutely don't. <laughs> you thought I was weird before, didn't you? I can tell, he. <laughs> no need to call me out like that. Now I feel kind of guilty. Don't worry. It's okay, I'm not upset. But I think you're the weird one here. Sorry, did I do something bad? That's not what I mean. Oh no, it's nothing like that. Hmm. It's just I can't read you at all. Like I could tell what everyone else's ultimate talents were, but I don't see anything from you. That will be because I don't have an ultimate talent. Is she saying that I just look that painfully average? Yep, yep. Oh well. I'm sure we'll get along just fine. Right. <laughs> I'm sure we will too. Oh yeah, I would get some more sleep if I was you. I can tell from looking at you that you don't rest as much as you should. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. For someone that's only 15, she sure has a scarily sharp intuition. Okay. I'm Anzu Kagami. I wasn't trying to hide it or anything, but my talent is like ultimate actress. But God, that hopeless look in your eyes really annoys me. You know that? Can I borrow your shades then, so I can hide my annoying eyes? Anzuka got me the ultimate actress, huh? I wonder if she's always moody. Hold on, no wonder your name sounded familiar. You're in Bandana Driver, weren't you? I guess I didn't notice you earlier because you had silver hair in the show. Huh? Y yeah. You played the main heroine, Hana. The latest hit was everything I could ask for. Ah, oh, I guess you know your stuff. Whatever. You know, I didn't think you'd be the type to be into it. I mean, the kid's superhero show of all things. Like, seriously. Oh, I get it. You must have a younger sibling to watch it. Oh no, I, uh... Well, I stumbled across it once on TV and... I kinda got hooked from all the interesting plot twists and storylines. Sure, it has some pretty unrealistic CGI, but there's real heart in how all of the characters are written. Huh? So that's why so many grown-ups are fans of the show. <sighs> See, I've never actually sat down and, like, watched it. I don't like watching my own stuff. You end up focusing on looking at all your imperfections. But I guess you wouldn't be able to relate. That's surprising. I didn't take her to be the self-conscious type. I guess everyone has their insecurities deep down. What the hell? Uh, speaking of imperfections, though, all that running around earlier made my hair all sweaty. Where's my hair sweater when I need it the most? Not sure if she has her priorities right, but I suppose I respect the extent a movie star will go to look the best they can for their fans. What? Look, either go find me a straighter or go talk to someone else. I can't believe it. Jeez, talk about a mood swing. As I told you earlier, I'm Mei Fing Li. My talent is Ultimate Waitress. It's a pleasure to meet you. Ultimate waitress, huh? I was almost expecting something much more grand just from her presence. But now she seems slightly more grounded to earth than I thought. By the way, you said you're from China, right? Your Japanese is really impressive. Of course. It's human decency to properly learn the culture of a country inside and out before you visit, correct? Learning Japanese was just the first step. Exactly. Besides, I've already been here for over six months. She's only been here for six months? And here I am only being able to speak one language. Well? Though I suppose there are some things I still don't understand at all. Hmm. Why does your country have a specific place just for girls that are dressed in maid outfits to serve male customers? The common male fantasy. What do you want from us? <laughs> it's all very intriguing. Oh, maid cafes. I've been living here all my life and I never understood why they are a thing either. Or how anyone could muster the courage to go into one of those places. Hey. I have a question. That's an order. When we leave the situation we're in, you will escort me around Tokyo. That was absolutely not a question. <laughs> well, sure, but I don't know if I'd be the best person to ask. Do you understand? I believe it's common courtesy to listen to a visitor's request, is it not? She has a sharp aura that makes it difficult to decline anything she says. Well, I'll do my best then. Quite satisfactory. Excellent. But what made you come to Japan in the first place? Well... Oh, it's nothing grand. 
it could have been any country. Working at too many high class restaurants made me want to experience something else for a change. She sure has confidence. Pretty sure only a handful of people on this earth could casually say something like that. Hey. So tell me, what's the most common dish a person can eat in Japan? Oh, uh, well, I usually choose ramen when I go out to eat. God, could I be any less original? How interesting. Quite an interesting answer. You seem to have a pretty ordinary diet. But perhaps that's what I require in my studies. It's decided. Once we're out, you will take me to the finest ramen store in all of Japan. Sure. She doesn't expect me to pay for the both of us, does she? <laughs> It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Sayuri Himejo. My talent is the ultimate barista. I hope we can become good acquaintances going forward. Wow, her smile is so graceful and she's so polite. I can't stop admiring how pleasant her aura is. <laughs> is something bothering you? Huh? Oh, it's nothing. I didn't mean to stutter like that. Hmm. Please tell me if there's anything on your mind. You said you were the ultimate barista, but you're so young. Don't worry about it. Yeah, well, everything I know is knowledge from my father. Everyone states that I'm a quick learner, but I've never really thought about it that deeply. Um... Besides, I really enjoy my work. In fact, it doesn't really feel like work at all. The fresh aroma of coffee could bring pleasure to any person, no matter how saddened they are. Even people that prefer tea? <laughs> I hope you understand. You understand what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, totally. You see? Did you know you can tell a person's personality through the coffee they prefer? So what kind of coffee do you like? Instant. <laughs> my, my, you sure are good at making jokes. <laughs> I was being dead serious. Um... Okay, let's see here. You're someone who prefers the destination rather than the journey. Well, she could have said, you're impatient, but ended it there. But she worded it so kindly. She's so angelic. Get a grip, me. Love at first sight just leads to bad decisions. Yeah. For me, I prefer drinking with two spoons of sugar. Hmm. Which I suppose could reflect that I prefer when people choose kinder words when they talk about serious topics. Two sugars? I thought you said you liked the taste of coffee before. Oh. I only said the aroma. I'm not a big fan of the taste, actually. Huh, so this a bit brace that doesn't even like the taste of coffee. Yeah, that's weird. Hi. It's a pleasure to meet you. You can call me Cypher. Just Cypher? Really? Is your first name Bill? <laughs> you see, I'm actually a little embarrassed to share my ultimate talent. Apparently, it's the ultimate ultimate, but I don't have the slightest clue as to what that could mean. Ultimate ultimate? You tell me. Look, I know what you're thinking, but like I said, your guess is as good as mine. Though I suppose the wording would imply that I'm the best at being the best? I can't believe someone could say something like that so nonchalantly. Though this talent combined with that outfit is leading me to believe that there are some screw loose in this person's head. Besides, what kind of name is Cypher? More importantly... But enough about me. I'm more interested in who you are. Wait, let me just... Uh, save here. I'm just gonna take a quick... Piss break. Alrighty, I'm back. I'm more interested in who you are. Earlier, you seemed to not know what your ultimate talent is, but maybe you're just hiding it from all of us. Why would I need to hide something like that? <laughs> you're right, that reaction before was genuine, so it'd be silly of me to think otherwise. That doesn't make sense. Besides, you seem like you'd be a terrible liar. I'm not sure why, but I feel like I was just insulted. Hmm. So I suppose that just means you either read your ultimate talent on the invitation and forgot it, or you simply forgot to check. <laughs> Maybe this makes you the ultimate klutz. God, the constant smile just makes everything sound ten times more condescending. <laughs> That's impossible. I suppose the one other possibility is that there was nothing written in the first place, but... Now that doesn't make sense as to why you'd be the only one without a talent. Just as I thought. A true man of mystery from head to toe. Hey, says you. We don't even know how old you are. Think. Remember what I said earlier? Me not saying my age has made you even more curious about me, right? I hate how he's completely right. Wait, he is a guy, right? Hey, one question. I kinda need to ask this so I know how to refer to you going forward, but... You're a guy, right? But you also sound super feminine. Hmm... You 
tell me? Your guess is as good as mine. Have you checked downstairs? Huh? <laughs> See, I might know a lot of things in general, but there's so many things I don't know about myself. Refer to Cypher as them, noted. Regardless, they're definitely a strange one. Oh, really? Just these guys? Okay. Alright, I think I've introduced myself to everyone. Sure have. After introducing myself to everyone in the room, I looked up toward the timer. Just a little over 30 seconds, huh? <laughs> Seems like we're right on time. I enjoy talking to everyone. I suppose time really does fly when you're having fun. Fun would not be the word I'd use to describe the situation we're in. Hmm. Hey, I know this might not be the right time to bring this up, but... Are we not going to take a look at the elevator there? Hmm. Huh? Hey, what's that face for? I know I didn't say anything weird. That's impossible. I came in here much earlier than you did, and yet you thought I had it checked? If that was a usable escape route, I would have mentioned it by now. <laughs> Come on, Ichigo, you gotta be smarter than that. You've got that wrong! It's it, you're alright, and I was just double checking. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not good at remembering names of people who I don't respect. Hey, hey, hey! Why you? That's an order. Quiet. Hey. Look. Everyone in the room looked up at the clock. He counted the last three seconds before reaching zero. Sounded like a microwave. The sound echoed through the room. Mayfake, Harvey walked up toward the door and slid it open. The now open door lit up the purple room with bright light. All right. Well, what are we waiting for? Sorry, I suppose I just didn't expect the door to open for some reason. <laughs> you really are a deaf old one, aren't you? It's decided. Come on. With Mayfang the lead, we all stepped through the door eagerly waiting for what was up ahead. And? As suspected, the door that we had taken was one that led to a gymnasium. What are those weird pink markings of the doors over there? But before I could get an answer to my question, the door on the far right opened up, revealing the people that were on the other side. Oh. <laughs> Follow me. Hey, hey, hey. Who the hell made you team leader? Two boisterous guys entered the gymnasium with four more following after. Uh. Aren't you being a little loud? Who gives a shit? Who cares? Now's not the time to be worrying about shit like that. These people who appeared in front of us, they must be people in the same situation as we are. Alright. I think there'd be more people in here. Let me guess, all of you want to join my crew too, right? You wanna go? None of us ever said we join your damn crew, dipshit. I see. Look, I'd say it's safe to assume that all of you are captives as well. The eight of us here woke up in a corridor of rooms, break through this doorway. How interesting. I'm guessing all of you went through a similar situation. <laughs> Sure did, but God, is it finally nice to see something that isn't orange? Huh? Orange? Would this be right? Oh, I see. That explains the sun symbols on the doors over there. Which means... Look! Cypher pointed toward the entrance that we came out of. We all turned around to check. Hmm. Oh, it's a moon symbol. So? Sure, but what the hell does that even mean? Do you have a second? So what colors were used in the rooms you were in? Do you understand? Purple, but that's not important at the moment. I'm guessing it's safe to assume that all of you investigated the corridor leading up to this gymnasium, correct? Exactly. Which would mean that the only possible escape route would be located somewhere in this room. Alright, man! Time to get searching, team! How about this? Wait, before that. Let's share any information we have with each other. Hey. We should introduce ourselves too. It'd be a pain to call out to someone if we don't know their names, correct? As per usual, I'd love to have a, even a fraction of our leadership skills. Hey, hold on, something has been bothering me, but... Was there only six people in your group? For real? So, that's it, huh? Ah, right, I guess there are eight of you and six of us. Weird. You listening? Look, who gives a shit about numbers right now? Let's get those introductions you mentioned happening so we can start investigating. I guess she's right. But it still bothers me. If there's 14 of us here that got kidnapped, why would they not split us up into two teams of seven? I suppose that can wait. Right now I should focus on introducing myself to these two people. Right to left to right. Look. 
I know you won't leave me alone if I don't tell you my name. Oh, are you gonna beat me up? It's Kenji Akagi. My talent is the ultimate boxer. Are you satisfied now? Oh, you mean it's full of imagination. <laughs> The ultimate boxer. Remind me not to piss him off. Are you satisfied? Alright, conversation's done. Leave. That's all you want to talk about? Wanna go? I won't repeat myself again, kid. Don't fuck with me! Leave. What the hell's your problem? Or I'll go my plans for not pissing him off. I was going to ask him if those bandages were aesthetic or if he was just injured, but... I don't think now's an appropriate time to ask. Kazumi Amimiya. Um, my talent is the ultimate painter. I... I'm so sorry. I'm always so terrible at introducing myself. Hey, don't sweat it. Same here. Relatable. Wait a second. Kazumi Amimiya, the ultimate painter. That sounds familiar. Oh, yeah. Oh no, did I do something bad? What? No, I just remembered where I saw your name, that's all. My name? You're that young high school art prodigy that painted the one Mount Fuji artwork that's now worth millions, right? I remember seeing you on TV. Right, of course. Thank you for remembering someone as important as myself. Someone that painted such a confident looking piece, she sure likes Gara. Hey! But it really isn't anything special. I don't even remember painting that piece, actually. Huh, you don't remember? It's your most famous work, isn't it? The thing is... You see, whenever I paint, I concentrate so much that I forget how much time passes. I remember feeling a little lonely and starting that piece. Uh... And the next thing I remember was the finished piece staring back at me. <laughs> Apparently three days had passed since I started and I didn't even realize. Three days? The moment I realized I'd finished, I just passed out on the floor. <laughs> Being passionate is good and all, but you have to look after yourself too. I just can't help it sometimes. How about you set a timer for every hour to remind yourself to take a break or something? Well... No. I'm sorry, but that wouldn't work. You see, when I first started, my parents would try to snap me out of it when I'd been paid for hours. But no matter what they said to me, I wouldn't notice. They'd touch me, shake me, and even try to take my brush away, but I'd still be focused on my art piece. <laughs> so now they just leave me alone and let me do my own thing. <laughs> That's a little depressing that her parents just gave up on the health of their daughter. But at the same time, the level of concentration is truly something else. Cool. <laughs> the name's Hayato Yamadera. Nice to meet ya. My talent is the ultimate striker. Am I cool or what? Striking what? You better not underestimate me because I'm short, damn it. A striker. I suppose that explains why he's dressed like a footballer. Oh. Heh. But for me to be wrapped up into this mess straight after returning home, talk about bad luck. <laughs> it's genuinely admirable that he can joke around in a situation like this. Though I suppose he seems like he doesn't take anything seriously. Honestly, I'm slightly jealous of that carefree attitude. Wait, so where exactly do you return from? <laughs> yup, yup. England. Huh. Hold on. What were you doing all the way on the other side of the world? <laughs> Wanna know? Wanna know? I'm pumped! You're that interested in the great Hayato Yamadera, are ya? Huh? You're not gonna ask what I was doing in England? <laughs> God, this kid's a real pain, isn't he? I don't think he'll let me go until I ask. Uh, what were you doing in England? I'm a great guy, aren't I? You ask and I answer. Listen up! Just playing the national under-18s British Football League. Huh? You're joking, right? You got scouted by an overseas team? <laughs> Amazing, I know, I know. I'm pumped! Go on, go on, keep those compliments coming. Hey, hey, hey! Don't you dare try to pat my head like I'm a kid. I'll bite. <laughs> bite? What is he, a dog? Hey, I wasn't anywhere near you. I felt the gaze of yours, you were looking at me like I was an annoying younger brother. I can confidently say that even if I had a younger brother, he wouldn't be nearly as annoying as this kid. Well, I'll go talk to someone else now. It was nice meeting you. <laughs> huh? Wait, don't leave me. 
I swear I won't be an annoying little kid. Who are you calling short? Hey, I am not little, you got that? And now he's talking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> Remember it well, kid. My name is Azuma Hasegawa. Prepare to be shot out of your mind. My talent is the ultimate pirate. <laughs> Seems like you're speechless. Though I don't blame you. You look nothing like a pirate. <laughs> ultimate what now? Huh? What are those eyes for, boy? I can see you don't believe me. <laughs> So you're saying you're actually a pirate? <laughs> I sure am. I'm convinced he's the weirdest person I've met so far in here. I suppose I'll try and humor him for a bit. Uh, but pirates don't exist anymore, right? Listen up. They sure do exist. They're looking at one right now. You sure you didn't get chosen for being the ultimate sailor instead? All right. Of course not. You're a real comedian, aren't you? Oh, so I was actually right, was I? Oh, don't sweat the details. Why sweat the details, kid? All that matters is that you have passions and goals in life. My passion, yes, well, I have a dream. Me. My dream is to sail the seven seas and to find all the treasure on this marvelous, water-filled planet. I'm just trying to get embarrassed for him at this point. I'll leave it to you. And that's where you come in, kid. Why do I have a terrible feeling about this? It's a thing called friendship. Why do you sail the seas with me? I'm sure you can be an excellent partner to join my crew. You look like you're filled with brilliant ideas. What did I say? Ah, yeah. Uh, no, no, don't give me your answer just yet, kid. Have a good think about it. And when we're out of here, you can let me know. What have I gotten myself into? I'm Haruka Kurizaki. My talent is the ultimate honor student. That's enough information for an introduction, is it not? Honor student? Uh huh. The ultimate honor student. I suppose that means she's really smart. Hey. Or is there something else you needed? Oh, I guess it'd be nice to get to know you a little better. Maybe your hobbies or interests? <laughs> I don't have any. Huh? Is she saying that to avoid conversation or is she being dead serious? Maybe I should say something instead. Well, I like listening to music and going on walks. What sort of music do you like? Hmm. No. I don't listen to anything. She's joking, right? Besides, why did she need to think about it? And here I was thinking I was bad at making conversation. You said you were the ultimate honor student, right? Is there any subjects you like more than others? Hmm. Here. World history. Yeah? And why is that? Hmm. No reason. I don't know what to say. Look, I tried my hardest to make conversation, okay? Hey. Are you okay? Yeah, totally fine. I suppose I'll try again later. Nice convo. Hey! The name is Taiga Toromaru. My talent is the ultimate golfer. Nice to meet you, dude. She looks like she captures electric type Pokemon. Taiga Toromaru, I've heard of her. She's the girl that won the Japanese National Golf Championship, and she was up against adults too. So what makes someone get into golf in the first place? Sorry, I was just wondering what made you choose golf specifically. Silly question. <laughs> oh, I could have been in any sport, really. I guess I just got stuck with golf because I was good at it, that's all. <laughs> See, I was just playing with some sticks and stones when I was a kid and a professional coach just happened to walk by at the right time. I feel like she definitely shortened her life story down a little too much. If a coincidence like that was actually the truth, her talent should be ultimate luck. Hey, hey! Hey, you sure are scrawny for a guy though. You don't play any sports, do ya? Yeah, no, not at the moment. Or ever. Hey! See, I don't get shut-ins like you. I never said I was a shut-in. Does she think people that don't play sports are allergic to their sun or something? <laughs> you listening? I'm surprised anyone can live without being active every day. What do you even do with your life? Well, I hang out with my friends out in the city and relax at home. I study a bit. God, I sound boring. Who gives a shit? Study? Huh, you do that shit? You haven't studied a single day in my life and look where I've gotten. 
<laughs> you, because you're talented. I can't believe she's saying that with so much confidence. To think those are the words of the greatest teen golfer in Japan. The greatest golfer? What makes you say that? Huh? I mean, did you win the national tournament in golf? Hey, hey! Yeah, so what? Which would mean you're the best golfer in Japan, right? Yeah, I agree with that. Oh yeah, that would make sense, wouldn't it? <laughs> Don't tell me she seriously didn't realize that. You're real smart, aren't you? I can respect that, Ryu. And now she's calling me by a nickname. Great. I generally can't tell if she's a genius or a complete idiot. Maybe both. Yeah. Then shall we move forward? I suppose I've talked to everyone here. Sure have. These reductions are starting to take a toll on me. God, I hope I remember all of these names. <laughs> so, that's it, huh? Like now what? We gonna look for a way out or? How about this? Let's first commence a proper investigation of this gymnasium. They were standing in for starters. But before any of us could begin searching the room, a voice coming from the now open sun door grabbed all of our attention. Um. Hello? We all turned around toward the direction of the voice. It was a young girl our age, with violet colored hair. <laughs> Hi. Sorry for barging in like this. I woke up a little back in one of those orange rooms. And after wandering around a bit, I heard voices in from the gymnasium here. So, here I am. <laughs> hmm. We're not actually stuck here in this building, are we? That doesn't make sense. And what took you this long? We've all established at this point that we've been held captive. Please keep up. Hey. Save the condescending remarks for later. Do you understand? What's the point is that we seem to have another captive joining us. In fact, perhaps she isn't the last member. So she's also on the sun side of this building. Would that mean there were eight rooms in the corridor too? Could there be one more captive still in the room? How interesting. So if you don't mind me asking, why are you alone? Did you wake up only recently or were you elsewhere? Um... Well, you see, it's a bit embarrassing to admit this, but... I was too scared to move, really. I'm not sure how long I was cowering in my blanket. <laughs> when I finally got the courage to leave my room, I noticed all of these open doors. I better walk in and I found all of you guys. And? I see, and who might you be? An introduction will make things going forward much smoother. Oh, right. I'm Rika Katsuragi. My talent seems to be the ultimate roller skater. I know my first impression might have been a little embarrassing, but I hope we can get along. Wait a second. Rika Katsuragi? Hold on. Little Ryu? Huh? Little Ryu? <laughs> my, my, what a cute nickname. Are you two acquaintances? Hey, cut it out. Don't call me that in front of the others. <laughs> I didn't expect to see you here. How long has it been? Almost 10 years? That's right. I didn't immediately recognize her because the last time we saw each other was in elementary school. She's only had to move schools because of her dad's work in the middle of the semester in the third grade. But to think I'd reunite with her for the first time in 10 years in a place like this. And I guess she grew her hair out. Yup, yup. So you're the ultimate roller coaster, huh? That seems like a fun talent to have. Hmm. Well, you see, this is what my invitation said and all. And it's true that I roller skate in my school club, but I've only ever won a few practice tournaments in my region. So I don't really get the whole ultimate thing at all. Well, that must just mean you're super skilled deep down. Oh, I'm Ichiro, by the way. Hey, hey, hey! Ruji, why the hell did you tell me you had a super cute childhood friend? Because you never asked. Not that I'd tell him even if he did, but... But I suppose Rika does bring up a good point. Sure, winning a regional tournament is impressive and all. But is that really all it takes to gain one of these ultimate talents? I have too many questions about this whole situation that I don't even know where to begin. Whilst I was organizing my thoughts and processing the fact that my childhood friend was captured here alongside me, a sudden noise made us all look at the same open sun door for a second time, this time much, much louder. Hey, hey, hey! Which one of you locked me in here? A man carrying what looked like a sword so big that it was impractical burst into the gymnasium. Die, 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 die! Wherever you are, you better own up before I start slashing down everyone here. <laughs> Is he guts? <laughs> the ultimate berserk? <laughs> why, why is this happening? Hold on, none of us did anything to you. 
I'll give her three more seconds. Hey. That's enough. Do you understand? All of us are in the exact same situation as that you are in. By the side of it, it seems like you woke up in this building too. Which would mean it's safe to assume that you'd be some sort of ultimate too, correct? Hmm? Ultimate? Uh, right. I'm the ultimate sword master. <laughs> Who gives a shit about titles anyway? You're going to end up being the ultimate corpse after you deal with die. <laughs> this is not how you get a girlfriend, dude. He's insane. You thought I'd let you live? So, who the hell do I need to cut up then? Hey, hey, hey! That's not actually like a real sword, is it? Seems like you wanna die. Would you like me to try it on you? <laughs> huh? The hell was that? Everyone in the gymnasium started to look around, trying to figure out where the noise came from. Um, okay, is this thing on? Ahem, seems like everyone is finally ready now. Alright, let's get cracking into business. The voice that echoed throughout the room was like a young child looking for a playmate. But under that layer of childishness, they are feeling of deception and control. Okay, please turn your heads to the front of the gymnasium. Perhaps it was just human curiosity, but without any sort of hesitation, all 16 of us shifted our gaze toward the front end of the room. The burning sun. The dark moon. Our panda is here. Suddenly from the side of the stage, a being that looked like a man-made panda appeared in front of our eyes. The hell is that thing? Yay! Look, a teddy! Whoa! It spoke? Ouch! Come on, no applause? At least clap, I mean, it took hours to rehearse the introduction. Mm. Ain't that a koala? This is it! No, this has gotta be an otter. Huh. I'm surrounded by idiots, aren't I? I'm not a koala! Like hell am I a pathetic koala? Shocking. Though maybe I really am just a pathetic useless thing that deserves no love. I'm not giving up. No, keep your head up. I am more than just a mere mammal. Sup? Talk about a personality complex. What the hell is going on? Have I gone crazy or is the toy panda really talking to us? No matter how hard I try, I can't react to what's unfolding before my eyes. Listen up. I'll tell you all how it started. The story of Alpan. Don't fuck with me. Just shut the hell up already. You just got me off there, Mr. Akagi. Kids these days don't have manners at all. I'm the headmaster. Want me to tell you something? I'm actually your headmaster. Huh? Hmm. I beg your pardon? How cool is that? I know, I know. Impressive, right? Well, now you all know, so you better be respectful. You better watch out. Because you see, if you're not, then you're not gonna like what happens. I'm kidding. Just kidding, as if I'd hurt my own students. You should probably think twice. At least now in my own hands anyways. Him. Right, well, so as I was saying, welcome to the School of Hope. I know it's called Utopic Crest, but don't sweat the details. Speaking of sweat... Ouch. I always wake up in the middle of the night with a cold sweat. Am I getting old or something? Yeah, that must be it. Cut the crap! Were you the one that trapped us in here? Utopia! Trap you? Hmm. Well, I see this more as an opportunity to figure out how talented you all really are. There are 16 of you here with various different styles from all across the country, some even from other countries. Aren't you curious to see who the best of the best is? The ultimate ultimate? Uh -huh. Wait, scratch that, we already have an ultimate ultimate. Uh, who comes up with these things? This ain't the time to be eating bamboo. Ahem, now listen up. This ain't the time to be eating bamboo. Murder? You will now begin the killing game. Huh? Killing game? The 16 of you are stuck in this academy for the rest of your lives. You only way to get out back to freedom, you ask? Listen up. Simple. Kill someone and don't get caught. How cool is that? How easy is that? Die, 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 die! I've had enough of your bullshit. As Sergio said that, he ran full force at Al Panda, grabbing his sword from his back and swinging it down to his target. 
Oh, he stopped it. Assaulting your headmaster? That's a new one. Let go of my sword, you son of a bitch! Okay, then. As he said, that he flexed Sejiro across the room. He landed in a large pile of chairs stacked in the corner of the gymnasium. Hey, what did you do to him? Listen up. Well, come on now, that was self-defense. Besides, don't worry about it, he isn't dead or anything. Like I said, I wouldn't ever personally kill my own students. <laughs> Grace is probably gonna feel that one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, what was I saying? Right, right, I suppose I should elaborate on what I said earlier. Alright then. Sure, I did say that this is the start of a killing game, but it's not like it's mandatory. Huh? How cool is that? Well, I mean, you can always just spend the rest of your lives in this facility if you'd like. But we got plenty of food and all things that are necessary to pander to your needs. Oh, yeah. Pander. Panda. Get it? <laughs> just kidding. You better watch out. But keep in mind, not everyone here wants to peacefully spend their youth in isolation. I'm kidding. You better watch your backs. <laughs> and do remember, if you do decide to go through with killing someone, Make sure you don't get caught. There'll be a punishment waiting for you, if you do. I can feel the panic emotions of everyone here, myself included. We surrounded the room and filled it with heavy air. Oh yeah. Oh wait, one last thing. You can sleep soundly as much as you like, by the way. Your bedrooms will be locked automatically and will only be able to be opened by using the designated keys. Hey. There you go. As you said that the panic tossed us all thin car-like devices in front of each one of us. Now, now. Go on, what you waiting for? Pick them up. Uh -huh. Or don't, I don't care what you do. Perhaps it was because we all slowly realized that this was the only choice left. But one by one, everyone picked up the cards scattered in front of them. Utopia! That right there is a U-Pass, your passport to Utopia. That card will act as your key to get into your rooms, as well as store some other nifty information. Hey! Make sure it's the right one too, your name will be printed on the back. I did as what I was told and flipped the card around. R. Uchida. Suppose that would mean that this is my U Pass. <laughs> well, that's it for me, so I'll see you all later then. I'll be expecting results. Ciao. And like that, I'll panda walled it off behind the card as it left us speechless in the gymnasium. But just as usual, the one to take charge was none other than Mei Feng. Hey. Uh, seems like we've been thrown into some twisted death game of sorts where we only have two options. Live in this building for the rest of our lives in captivity. Do you understand? Or kill someone without being caught and leave. This is some kind of sick joke. There's no way what that panda said is the truth, right? Hey, hey, hey! I mean, why are we being forced to kill each other? This might be worse than I imagined. It seems as though things were much sinister than we first anticipated. This level of mass kidnapping could have been initiated by a single person. This is the work of something like a criminal organization. Why is this happening? What the hell? Why would some organization go out of their way to trap us here? Right, just as both of them said. Some kind of organization of sorts captured us, but for what reason? Because we're the next hope for the country? For use as hostages for a large sum of money? I don't know. I don't get it at all. I'm sure the police will look for us, right, if we suddenly went missing. Do you understand? Whilst it could be a possibility, don't get your hopes up. We could be an entirely different country for all we know. Why? We can't call for help in here either. It dawned on us that we really were trapped here. The words that the panda said were no lie. Could the only way of getting out really be to kill someone? Hey. Alright, let's just clarify one thing real quick. None of you are thinking about killing someone, right? The air went cold. What did you say? I ain't trusting any of you, alright? Don't you dare come near me. Hey, hold on. W why? How are we supposed to trust each other when we've just met? Guys, wait. I'm sure no one is planning on... Just then, I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was Reika. Um... I totally get how you feel, but everyone has every right to be concerned. I mean, even I don't know how to process all of this. I'm just telling myself to just smile and everything will be alright, but I don't know how much longer my mental state will last. Come on, I think everyone needs time to themselves. Well, what's the plan then? Hey! 
let's change the scenery a bit. Why don't we look around to see if there's some magical escape route? As if something that convenient would. You've got that wrong. We don't know until we check. Well, not until we check, huh? I suppose she's right. Add to help with it. Who said with absolute certainty that this building has no exits? I turn around to the other 14 students in the gymnasium. Huh? What are you doing? I'll promise to all of you right here. That no matter what happens, I won't kill anyone. Because I'd rather be dead and become a disgusting murderer. I felt the stare of the other captains intensify toward me. Some clearly with doubts about me. But I didn't care. I said my two cents on the matter. Bonk. You listening? Stop acting like Mr. Cool Guy. It was Reika. She had lightly hit me on the head with her fist. <laughs> but you know what? Your little heroic speech has taken some weight off of my shoulders, I think. So thanks. I'm glad she seemed to have cheered up even if it was just by a little bit. But thinking back, maybe what I said back there was a little out of character and borderline embarrassing. I blame adrenaline. <laughs> but at least it's off my chest now. I think I've at least figured out one thing. In order to combat something as devastating and despair filled as this, it seems like I'll need to find ultimate hope and cling onto it for my dear life. Cool. The Promised Utopia End Prologue 16 remain. Yes, they are. 16 remains. Turn the title, sure. So yeah, that was Dan up Arto Nexus. Yeah, not bad. I thought it was gonna be just another. Hmm. Whatever what kind of gimmick this has. I mean, it has the sun part, the moon side. How is this gimmick done? Like in Jikorapa, there's a poem gimmick that's on the trial. Pretty fucking awesome. What else are there gimmicks? Uh, I don't remember any. Yeah, some are just regular Dan Rupa, Dan Rupa fan games. So I hope it implements some sort of gimmick or something. So yeah, if you want to try the game for yourselves, the links are in the description. That is all for today. Stay safe and take care of yourselves.